fun. Slice of cake. Leah, please things. eat up that cheesecake, because if you don't, I'll take it home. <laughs> <laughs> Again, as we talked about earlier, <laughs> Laura and I have taken uh, some Crown Financial classes, and they are uh, fantastic. And yeah. Yes, they are around finances and material yeah. stuff, but it covers, most of the time when you hear that in church, you think, you know, tithing and we're going to kind of beat you up and, and ask that you're more money. You're not giving enough. And, and it's really not no, like that. Uh, it just talks about God is the owner of everything and about how our relationship with Him should reflect that. It gives a lot of very practical advice. Right. Um, lots of scripture. And we would like to encourage you guys to see us if it's a class you're interested in taking. It's a 10-week small group study, limited to about 10 folks. Um, it's about a two-hour class each time. We're thinking about the possibility of either, either offering it in the evenings, you know, one evening a week, or during the Sunday school hour and the 11 o'clock service, yeah. depending on what the people that want to take the class uh, can do. Um, so it's something we would really encourage you to do. There is a cost for the materials. It's $65 for a couple or $45 for an individual. And it's really neat to see the uh, uh, to see the bonding that happens on about the fourth week with the group. Uh, it's, it's really neat stuff. So we would strongly encourage you. So tonight we're going to have some excerpts, two particular right. sections and chapters from the Crown material and just kind of touch on a few things, give you some practical stuff. Uh, but there's a lot more in there. So if you're interested in taking the class, let us know. Before we begin, how about if we open with a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, it's a wonderful blessing that you have given us that we can assemble in your house uh, for a time of study in your word. And, uh, Lord, we just ask that you would use this time to draw us closer to you and as couples, Lord, closer to each other. And we just pray that all that we say and do would uh, honor and glorify you and advance your kingdom and that you would just help us go forward from this place later today, Lord stronger and closer and uh, more open, Lord, to whatever your word would have to say to us. And we just certainly pray these things in your son's name and lift this time up to you. Amen. 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 So how many of you uh, have any debt? Anybody here got some debt? Sure. <laughs> 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 I have a child in college. We are in debt. Amen. How many folks would like to decrease that debt and increase your savings? Hey, two, two things going in a good direction. So some of the stuff that Crown talks about can definitely help you apply God's principles to do those two things. So as we start off tonight, I want to show two, about two and a half minute videos from the Crown material to give you just some idea about what, what they're about. What they're about and what some of their yeah. goals are. And it's going to seem like we're selling Crown, but Crown is just a study on what God thinks about how our relationship is with Him and money. And, I mean, when we took it, it was life-changing. It was an awesome study. And it really hit home to how we thought about money. So this is not about cram as much as it is a study on God's principles about how we handle money. And it's certainly not about you need to give more, no. and more money to unity and that sort of no. thing. That's kind of not what this is about. So let me see if I can get uh, this up and going here as we, oops, as we switch from the program. Do we need to turn the light off? I think so. Students get the discs, uh, but it includes about money. two books and a textbook. It's kind of an old book. Does it really apply to me today? What does the Bible say about money? Why does God care how I spend my money? Does the way I use money today have an impact in eternity? Does He really care how I spend my money? How does God do that? Is it a sin? The Bible really doesn't address money, right? Wrong. 
Jesus said more about money almost more than any other subject. The Bible has over 2,300 verses on money and possessions. If we handle our money according to Scripture, we have a greater relationship with Christ. The Crown Biblical Financial Study will teach you what Scripture says about managing all of your possessions and provide practical guidance on spending, saving, earning money, investing, getting out of debt, giving, and teaching children. And the small group environment provides tremendous encouragement for everyone. You have the opportunity to encourage others and be encouraged at the same time. Through a series of 10 small group study meetings, you will achieve what others have achieved. A recent survey revealed that participants in the Crown Study reduced their debt by an average of 38%, increased their savings by 58%, and 78% of married participants say their marriages are being strengthened by taking the study together. About eight years ago, Michelle and I married, and not long after that, we went through the 10-week biblical financial study. Uh, we began paying off all of our debt. We had about $25,000 in debt. We paid that off in about 14 months. After we got out of the debt, we started saving for home. We were able, in a relatively short period of time, on an average income, to build a home completely debt-free. And all of this uh, accomplished um, just applying the biblical principles um, that we learned in the 10-week in the study. Crown Biblical Financial Study is one of the best investments you can make now that will benefit you for the rest of your life. Start a legacy of financial faithfulness now that future generations will enjoy later. You know, dozens of churches have surveyed their life group members to confirm the impact of this study, and these surveys found that the average household reduces their consumer debt by 38% and increases their savings by 27%, all within three years of completing the study. Wow. God has made it clear that He wants us to teach 5% of the world's population, about 300 million people, His financial principles by September 2015. Wow. Consider the incredible influence. This was made. 5%. That's 1 out of 20 people who are handling money God's way. Right. For example, if 200,000 people live in your area, that means 10,000 people would complete the study. Mm -hmm. And 10,000 life group members paying off an average of $20,000 in debt would eliminate a total of $200 million of debt. Exactly. If this is credit card debt at about 18% interest, that's $36 million each year could be freed up for people to reach their God-given financial goals and to help fund the work of Christ. Another part of this vision is for half of these life group members to become financially free within 20 years. So if you're from a community of 200,000, 5,000 people in your area would eradicate all their debt, become consistent savers who save enough to be financially free to do whatever God wants them to do without the need to even earn a salary. That sounds pretty good to me. Now, dream with us for just a moment. What would happen in your community if there were 5,000 financially free people who loved Christ? Well, if half of them were called to work full-time in their church or in the ministry, um, think about what would happen in your city, in jails, on college campuses. What could happen in your local church? What would happen on the mission field? And if the other half were called to continue in their vocation with their financial houses in order, then they would be in a position to give a significant portion of their income to the work of Christ. Imagine 2,500 people giving $20,000. They would give, collectively, $50 million each year to the cause of Christ around the globe. Wow. If God allows us to accomplish this vision, millions of people will become financially free, and billions of dollars each year will be given to the work of Christ. You know, Kelly, I'm convinced that we can actually fund the Great Commission in this generation. You might be right. Well, we pray that this study will be very valuable to you, and we also hope that you will join us in making this vision a reality. May God bless you, and have fun. Did any of y'all take the uh, David Platt radical? Were y'all in class? Yeah. When we were in that, I felt pretty overwhelmed because it's like, you know, he was basically
basically say, you know, give up everything and go forward. Sold, totally sold out to Christ. And I felt like, how do I do that? There's just no way that I can do that. And this, with, with the study that we do, I'm very much into function. If I don't know how to apply it to my life, it's kind of difficult. And so many times we come to church and we get, you need to be doing this, you need to be doing that. But no, how do I do that? So that's what we want to try to work with with this study. So tonight we'll give you a few uh, nuggets of insight into that. So we're going to start off tonight with Luke 16, 11. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the use of worldly wealth, who will entrust the true riches to you? And one of the things that, um, that we'll talk a little bit more about in the next few slides is what are these true riches? riches? Not that if you can be faithful with $100, you'll have $1,000. Right. God's, you know, you sort of get the God's a magic genie. Well, hey, if I contribute 100 well, then I go home and there's a check in the mail for 200 That has happened to people. <laughs> there are tremendous stories like that right. where people have been blessed that way. Right. But this true riches that Luke is talking about is a closer relationship and a closer walk with the Lord. And we'll talk about some of the advantages of that as we go down as well. Because most people's way of handling money is in contrast, at least in some part, to God's Word. And one of the things that uh, many of you might think about is if you're tithing 10%, it's pretty easy to say, well, the other 90% is mine. And I can do with and control and do anything that I want to with that. I met my obligation. Right. And I gave God I checked the 10%. box. So sometimes we think that the rest is ours. Well, let's look at Matthew 25, 21. Most of you have heard this verse many times. Right. Well done, good and faithful servant. We all like that first yeah. sentence, of course. You are faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. You've maybe even heard that part of the verse. But when I looked this one up to prepare this, I did not remember the very last phrase. And that was, enter into the joy of your master. That is going back to the closer relationship, the true riches. Enter into the joy of your master if you are obedient in handling money the way that he talks about, the way that he calls us to. And that's really kind of the ultimate right. goal. Not the slot machine, right. not the, uh, the quick and fast return. Because I'm going to confess, I have a large struggle with money and work. Because I think, well, if I'm working and then I'm getting money, then I'm secure. Everything is okay as long as the money is coming in. Anybody else? Kind of feel that way too sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So I'm putting my trust in first me and then second work. And then I work at a job where if it, it can decrease, I see patients. And if it decreases and the money starts decreasing, I start going into the panic mode. Like, oh my gosh, I've got to go out and get another job. And it's a big struggle for me, and God is trying to say, well, wait a minute. Who, A, gives you the ability to work? Who gives you the job? Where is your trust and hope? Is it in that job, or is it in me? Because ultimately, how you handle money impacts your relationship with God. And one of the ways that it does that is money and possessions compete with God right. for first place in our lives. Because what is an Not idol? Frequently. What is an idol? Anything you put before God. Bingo. Anything. Anything. Before God. Very good. Um, because we all know the verse that says you cannot serve God and money. You cannot serve two right. masters. So money will compete uh, for our attention. This was sort of interesting. Um, in the 12th century, when the Crusades were going on, the Crusaders would hire mercenaries to go out and, and do the things that they wanted them to do. But before they would begin fighting and, and go off to war, they would be baptized. I mean, the contrast here is kind of funny, but hang with me on the story. Um, as they were being baptized, they would take their swords, and 
and they would hold their swords above the water as they were done. And that was symbolic of them saying that I'm willing to give, you know, my heart, my life, my mind, or whatever to the Lord in this baptism, but he does not have control of my weapon. Right. God does not have control of my sword. And how many of us do that with our lives? I will give you this, God, but... Or how many times do we give it to God and then I call it my baggage? Well, here, God, you can have my baggage, but then I'm, I'm picking it back up. Because I don't know if I can really trust God to handle it. He may let me down. So there's the trust uh, issue along those lines as well. So there's competition in our lives for first place in our heart. Fortunately, though, God does want us to be money smart. You heard them say in the video, 2,350 verses, one of the most talked about subjects right. in all of Scripture, money and possessions. So God is talking about if we can be obedient under His right. commands, rules, that sort of thing about how to handle money, that will draw us into those true riches and that loving relationship with Him. So there's a lot of stuff in God's Word right. about how to handle money. Because He loves us so much, He knew that this would be an issue. That's why there's so many verses on it. So let's take a look at one of those. This is uh, When you take the crown class, you have to memorize a verse every week. And you have to say that verse in class, so there's no, there's no fudging. There are some that are a little on the short side, and you can kind of study on your way to church.